On this worksheet, we're going to practice drawing the structures of a few different types of triacyl glycerols. And the first one is asking us to draw a triacyl glycerol that is formed from glycerol, that's the backbone molecule in the triacyl glycerol, and also lauric acid and muristic acid, and the descriptions of lauric and muristic acid are provided for us. So let's begin by drawing that um, glycerol backbone. Remember, this is a three carbon backbone, and each of these carbon atoms are single bonded to an oxygen and that is bonded to the carbon-oxygen double bond. This is the general format for all triacyl glycerols, and then we're going to attach to these last carbon atoms, we're going to attach the carbon chains from the, from the fatty acids. Don't forget that we do need to make sure that our carbon atoms all have four bonds, so on the glycerol backbone portion of the molecule, we've got to fit some hydrogens in there. Now, the problem is telling us that the triacyl glycerol is going to be formed from lauric and muristic acid. That means that we're going to put lauric acid somewhere here, we're going to put muristic acid somewhere here, and then we're going to put a, an, either another lauric acid or another muristic acid. It's totally our choice. Saturated acids are ones that have all carbon-carbon single bonds, no double bonds. So for the lauric acid component, wherever we choose to put it, we're just going to add, or we're just going to have 12 carbon atoms, all single bonded. Remember that this carbon is counting as carbon number one, so that means we're just going to add 11 more carbons out here. Let's just go ahead and do that first. Um, I'm going to draw this in line structure because it's a lot faster. So there's carbon number two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then in my second position, I think I'm just going to draw another lauric acid. Carbon number 1 is already written 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then in my last spot, I'm going to draw a muristic acid. This is also saturated, 14 carbon atoms. This is my carbon number 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. For the second problem, uh, pretty similar, we're going to draw another triacyl glycerol. So let's go ahead and get our glycerol backbone set up. Three carbons, single bond each one to an oxygen, and then our carbon oxygen double bond. And then let's see what we're going to put on this one. This says we want palmitoleic acid. This is 16 carbons unsaturated at carbon number 9, and stearic acid saturated 18 carbons. Um, and again, no rules about what we put where. So I think I'm going to put the palmitoleic acid up top just to get that one over with. It's going to be trickier because it has the um, carbon-carbon double bond. So unsaturated it means that we have a carbon-carbon double bond. It's at carbon number 9, so that means it goes from carbon number 9 to carbon number 10. And because this is a natural fatty acid, this needs to be a cis bond. So we're going to need to make it cis, which makes it a little bit trickier to draw. So like I said, I'm just going to do that first, get that one over with. Here is carbon number one. I'm going to go all the way up to carbon number nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I need to make a double bond to carbon number 10. This is the unsaturated at carbon number nine. That's what that's referring to. And now I'm going to continue on my chain. So I've got 16 more carbons to go. And it needs to be cis. So that means I need to go this way with it so that I have this cis configuration. 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now, in terms of as you're going cis, in terms of you know what you what you continue to do with the carbon chain, that really is completely up to you. The most important part is that from eight to nine to ten to eleven, you have this kind of U shape, and then as you continue on down the chain, you could you know you could continue up, you could kind of make it go this way, or you could go the direction that I have. That's really up to you. For the other two positions, I'm going to keep it easy. I'm going to use the palmitoleic acid, 16 carbon 
at, oh, sorry, I'm going to use stearic acid, saturated. So now we're back to carbon, carbon, single bonds, 18 total carbon atoms. We've already got one drawn, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. For the next one, this says um, a little bit more descriptive, so we're going to draw another one. Cocoa butter, this says we want oleic acid bonded to the secondary o OH group of the glycerol, and then either palmitic or stearic acid bonded to the primaries. And we're going to draw structures of two possible triacylglycerols here. Um, so I'm going to start with my glycerol framework, three carbon atoms single bonded to the oxygens and then we've got our carbon oxygen double bond and fill in those hydrogens on the glycerol backbone and so let's go back to the description it says oleic acid bonded to the secondary oh group so the secondary position is the one that's in the middle and the ones on the ends, just in case you ever come across this, both of these would be a primary position. This is just referring to our designation primary, secondary, tertiary, which has to do with how many hydrogen atoms are added or um, on each one of those carbons. The, the problem is not giving us a description of what oleic acid looks like. So we know we need to put oleic acid here, but we don't know exactly what it looks like. In a situation like this, find a resource. You've got um, structures of these different uh, fatty acids in your textbook, or you can just go to the internet and just, you know, look them up. I have uh, looked up palmitoleic acid already. Let's look up oleic acid. Um, here's the structure of oleic acid. Now it's drawn in a different order or different direction than what we need it. It's going from left to right instead of right to left. And I can't use my cursor over on the web page, so I just touched it and it um, it did that. I can't use I can't touch the web page without it doing that. So we're just gonna have to kind of count in our heads here. I'm gonna be starting at the carbon oxygen double bond on the, the right hand side of the drawing, and that is gonna be carbon number one. And what I'm trying to do there is to figure out where the double bond is located. So I'm gonna be starting here and I'm gonna count in my head and you're gonna to have to count along with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this carbon oxygen double bond starts at carbon number nine and it goes to carbon number 10. And I can see from the drawing that it is cis. So I need to replicate that. Um, I'm going to make a note that this is oleic acid. I need to replicate that in my drawing. So I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. Um, I want my oleic acid, the problem says oleic acid bonded to the secondary OH group. So that means my oleic acid is going to go right here. I've already got one carbon in place. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's put those numbers down. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I need to go double bond to carbon number 10. That's this one right here. And let's go back to the drawing and let's figure out how many more carbon atoms we need after the double bond. So counting from the double bond, continuing on from the double bond, um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more carbons to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now let's see what else we need to do in this problem. It says we want to have either palmitic or stearic acid bonded to the primary. So that's this right here. Going to be our choice, palmitic or stearic acid. Let's take a look at those pictures. Palmitic acid. This one looks like it's really easy to draw. So let's go with that. This is completely unsaturated, no double bonds. I'm gonna count how many carbon atoms there are. You can count along with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So let's do that. Let's do 16 palm, palmitic acid in both of the positions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
Is that right? I already lost count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is one possible structure. The problem tells us to draw two possible triacyl glycerols. So um, we drew one option. We know that always in this molecule, we have the oleic acid in, the, in this particular position. So if we wanna draw a different version of this particular triacyl glycerol, or only option would be to change one or both of the groups that are on the primary, um, primary carbons here. So let's just change one of them. Let's just change this one down here, try to keep it simple. And let's do stearic acid down here in this position. So that's the change that we're gonna make. Let's look up the structure of stearic acid. Stearic acid says that it is an 18 carbon chain. We drew a 16 carbon chain here. So if we wanna modify this, we would just need to add a couple more carbon atoms right there. That's pretty simple. Last question is asking us to come up with how many total different triacyl glycerols we can make from three different fatty acids. And this problem is actually um, kind of tedious. Uh, we don't wanna consider any possibility of cis-trans isomers. We just wanna consider all the different combinations of fatty acids A and B and C. Um, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna actually like draw out all of the different structures. What I'm gonna do instead is just to say, one option would be to have all fatty acids A, A and A, Another option would be to have fatty acids B all the way down or fatty acids C all the way down. Another option that you could have would be to one, have one A and two Bs, and they could be in a couple of different possible arrangements. Like you could have the two Bs by, together or you could have the Bs being separated by the A. This is not a different structure from this one right here because for both of them, the two Bs are together and the A is kind of by itself. We could replicate that with A and C, so we could have ACC and CAC. We could also replicate that with B and C. BCC, BCB. Uh, and as you can see, there's, there's gonna be a lot of different options here. So in terms of going through all of these in the video or even, you know, sort of on your own time, you really don't need to do this. What I want you really to do is just recognize that there are so many different combinations of these different um, possibilities for these, for these triacyl glycerols. And we've come up with, you know, what looks like maybe about 10. There's probably a lot more. But we'll call this enough for now.